Yo, what's going on, you guys? Your boy Ben Mahari here, representing the Hari Asian Sports Podcast. I wanted to make sure that you guys had a, a good uh, Fourth of July uh, weekend, man. I hope y'all had a you know safe uh, Fourth of July, whatever, with your families and your friends and all that, and stayed out of trouble and everything else. Much love to all my subscribers and all the brothers out there in the LDBC too for doing their great due diligence out there, man. And uh, tonight's uh, game one of the NBA Finals uh, tonight between the Phoenix Suns and the Milwaukee Bucks. I'll do a uh, post-game last stream reflecting on my thoughts of the game and how I expect from the series and then my predictions on how the series will turn out. But uh, speaking of the NBA Finals or whatever, this story has been, you know, been getting a lot of traction over the last uh, last uh, day and a half. You know, I mean, starting back on, on yesterday. Um, particularly on the whole situation between uh, Maria Taylor and Rachel Nichols and the whole hypocrisy that's going on in ESPN right now. And before I did the video, I wanted to like do some background research and I wanted to listen to people like, you know, Lewis Sports Network, uh, Too Raw for TV, Ticket TV, FYS Sports Debates, you know, I mean, Kwame Brown and also LVZ. I wanted to listen to all of their different types of perspectives and how they kind of viewed the whole situation before I w went in there and did my did the video. And also combining with the research I've been pretty much been doing on this whole situation, I pretty much wanted to make sure to get all sides of the story and then came up with my, you know, opinion on the whole situation. Now, here's what I here's what I believe in this whole situation. This is basically fake woke woke, woke is woke feminism at its apex. Okay. You have a situation between black feminism and white feminism. All right. That's where the base of this whole situation is. As 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 is, as is constructed right here, right now. Okay. Now here's what I here's what I think about this whole thing. Okay. Maria Taylor was assigned to work the NBA playoffs and the NBA finals above uh, Rachel Nichols. Rachel Nichols was not happy about that and basically did a uh, had a conversation with one of LeBron James's uh, representatives, actually advisor, I should say, and talked about how she was not happy about that, and more importantly, how to deal with the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter movement and all this uh, woke feminine, woke stuff that's been going on around here, okay? And really what I tend to think about this whole situation is, is that both these ladies, they're both hypocrites on both fronts, okay? Now, I'm going to do this one at a time, and I'm going to I'm gonna have some different type of thoughts that you may not like to hear or may not agree with. You have, you have the right to speak about it in the comment section below, but let's keep it civil as possible, okay? Now, listen, I like Maria Taylor, all right? I really do like, you know, her, like her, you know, on, on the uh, NBA, you know, countdown shows, on the NBA finals and all that. That's just my personal preference. However... With that being said, if we're really being honest with ourselves, she would basically she she you could say that she worked hard to get to get to that spot right now uh, working at ESPN. But if we're really being real with ourselves, if you look at Maria Taylor's track record, she's basically a person that basically showed her support of the Me Too movement. That's how she got her spot at ESPN. All right. Same in the contrast of Miss Rachel Nichols here. Because at the, because here's the thing about Rachel Nichols. Rachel Nichols, what does she represent? Feminism, women's rights, and the whole ideology of the Me Too movement. Okay? And so when Rachel Nichols found out about what the ESPN re representatives were going to do in terms of changing the lineup, you know what she basically called, you know, Maria Taylor? Basically a diversity tool because they she viewed Maria Taylor as a diversity tool to try to draw out the viewers and to showing them that ESPN is more diverse, allowing you know different people to run to basically be to be the uh, leading roles at different shows. Okay. Now, what make what really is make this very very bad on this situation is as simple as this: Maria Taylor's contract is expiring on ESPN. You know, after the NBA Finals is concluded. She was offered a $5 million deal to stay with ESPN, but she wants to have an $8 million deal because in her mind, she feels that she's one of the most talented women on the network and feels like she deserves the opportunity to make to load some more money, almost in a similar class of a Stephen A. Smith. OK, now I want to make this very, very clear. I do not like Stephen A. Smith because he's pretty much a sellout. I just want to make that very, very clear. But if we're really being honest with ourselves, listen, Maria Taylor has worked for the network for seven years. OK, she worked for the NFL Network. She's worked for college football on the SEC Network and also with ESPN working with the SEC as well, okay? She's worked there for seven years. Stephen A. Smith has been working for ESPN since the early 2000s, 
Okay, he's worked his well slow, up the ladder, working at Wisdom Salem University, working as a uh, as a college you know student reporter. All right, then he worked himself in the Philadelphia Inquirer, covering the Philadelphia 76ers with those Allen Iverson led teams. Okay, and also the, the fact that he's worked for CNN, he's worked for Fox, and now he's worked for ESPN not once but twice. And then he basically the reason why ESPN gave him that big big contract is simple as this and i'm just speaking as, as a casual viewer's perspective not for a lot of you guys that don't like it for the reasons that i gave but the reason why they gave Stephen a smith the big time money is because he's charismatic he's funny and he's entertaining to the casual viewers and that's why they bring that's why more viewers always want to watch him on the network most of the time and so maria taylor in her perspective is she feels that she's she's more of those talented characteristics then of a Stephen A. Smith and deserve this. She believes that he deserves that kind of money. To me, in my opinion, she's kind of going at this the wrong way. Because to me, in that in that kind of perspective is, is that she has not put in the due diligence and not put in the work in those all those years to warrant that kind of case. All right. And so really that's what my two cents about this whole thing is. But at the same time, she is much more talented than Rachel Nichols. And here's what really what makes Rachel Nichols look real, real bad in this whole situation, okay? Because she basically, through her tape, while talking to LeBron James' advisor, she makes herself look real, real bad as a hypocrite and a huge person that is being exposed on her double standards, all right? Because you've got to remember something. And this is something that I did. I, I totally forgot about this. And I want to shout out Lewis Sports Network for bringing up this this huge thing that I totally forgot about, and he is 100% correct. When Derrick Rose had his 50-point game when he was playing for the Minnesota Timberwolves back in 2018, you want to know what Rachel Nichols did in the days after that when she was working on the jump? She had the audacity and the unmitigated goal to bring up Derrick Rose's, you know, rape, you know, conviction or whatever back in 2016. Like, what does that anything to do what he basically did on the basketball court? You know what I'm saying? It literally made no sense. And also, the other second point is, is that she has this overwhelming fake love of Kobe Bryant because she always wants to put up, you know, this front of, you know, Kobe Bryant, you know, you know, knowing Kobe Bryant since his, you know, teenage days. You know what I mean? When he get, entered into the league, which is absolute BS to me because if you really look at, if you really listen to what she says about Kobe, of all the disparaging remarks that people have said about Kobe over the years, not one time that she ever stood in his defense. And the only reason why he, she's doing that even now in the wake of his death in 2020 is because of the fact that he's because of uh, Kobe Bryant's, you know, affection and also his support of his daughters. Think about the two main things, okay? Women's rights, feminism, daughters. Connect the dots, people. That's why she's now much more supportive of Kobe Bryant. It's not because of his basketball career or anything like that. It's because of those three characteristics I mentioned here. Connect the dots on this, okay? So the other thing too that is uh, really is uh, really got my attention about this whole situation is, is that how of a much of a double standard hypocrite that she is, and it really exposes more about the white privilege that goes on in media. Because I've been because I've seen this kind of situations many times before, especially when I was studying journalism at the University of Minnesota. There's always going to be people that are going to look have the same appeal, that have the, the gorgeous looks, and probably has a bit more talents than probably than a person that's been doing this for at least 15 to 20 years. And most times, the, you know, either the producer, the network, and the executives are going to pick the attractive person that over the person that basically has the most experience. And you know what I'm saying? And so, really, what is really really belongs in this whole situation is that when LeBron's advisor was stressing out the fact that he was tired of the whole Black Lives Matter movement, Rachel Nichols was, was in that conversation laughing while the whole conversation was being recorded, which really tells me in my observation is that you, Rachel Nichols, you don't believe in the whole sole purpose of the Black Lives Matter movement, which is the apex of white privilege and white supremacy, okay? And so the person that pretty much leaked the information you know, probably heard something that she probably probably heard something that was very, you know, distasteful and to decide and then pretty much, you know, leak the audio towards, you know, the media, towards the media. Right. And so that person that leaked the audio is now suspended without pay. But the, but the really the, the whole thing situation was is that it really highlights the whole situation of how 
ESPN is going to will is going to be willingly to protect you know certain people from this kind of level of backlash. And right now she is getting the worst backlash out of anything, and rightfully so because it basically it basically views her as a hypocrite. Because the other thing too that you also have to understand is is that why is she has that whole closely relationship with LeBron James? As you guys know, if you watch ESPN regularly, she does a majority of LeBron James interviews. She's always getting close up personal with LeBron all the time. Now, people are going to mention about the whole Ahmad Rashad and Michael Jordan type of relationship when basically when Ahmad was working at NBC Sports back in the day. That was a totally different situation because NBC Sports preached professionalism in terms of their reporting and journalism. OK, and so Ahmad Rashad was doing the doing the apex of his job. You understand what I'm saying? Totally different situation. But another thing that really, you know, caught my attention, and this is something that I actually had to research about this. Did you guys know in 2016 when uh, Rachel Nichols was working as the host of The Jump with Brian Windhorst, you know, Tracy McGrady and Vince Carter? They noticed that, I should say Brian Windhorst noticed that LeBron James was basically in, in Rachel Nichols' DMs messaging her, you know. Vince Carter had this whimsical look on her face, and T Max was pretty much uncovered the whole situation because it was whole. This whole dynamic was pretty much uncomfortable, and as soon as Rachel Nichols saw that, she immediately, you know, quickly in a, with a in a quick second shut that thing down immediately because she wanted to make the appearance that there was nothing going on between LeBron James and Rachel Nichols here. Okay, and why is it that now? This whole angle about LeBron James here is going on around here because even when I heard about that, I was like, "How oh, come on? How could this be anything to do with LeBron James? How would he? How would how would him person? How would LeBron James himself would even know about this?" It's more aligned along the fact that you had somebody in LeBron's crew talking to Rachel Nichols, speaking about how she's about they're so tired of the Black Lives Matter movement, and it really goes along with the whole you know fake woke feminism type BS that's going on in this country now. Here's what I really do think about the whole the whole situation. ESPN is doing the whole get along type of thing. When they recognize when a whole, you know, something in our society is, is the hottest thing going on right now, what they try to do is play the whole get along type of game to try to draw out ratings. All right. You notice how Molly Karam goes on along with the get along game. Same with Steve A. Smith, Max Kellerman, you know, and all the other people that have worked at ESPN. All right. Now, listen, there's going to be certain situations where, you know, People are going to basically side along with what they think is hot. But if you really use your mind and really understand what the whole movements are all about, they're all fake. And especially when it comes to Black Lives Matter, because it, because the slogan looks nice. But if you actually read into what the movement is really is about and how they operate, it's, they don't preach what their slogan says. All right. And. It's all about branding. It's all about money with these with these with these, you know, so-called activist movements. It's all about money to these people. You understand what I'm saying? Now, do I believe that they're going to fire Rachel Nichols? No, absolutely not. And I'm going to explain to you why that's not going to happen. All right? Because if you look at Rachel Nichols and how she got the job at ESPN, her daughter, her, basically she's a daughter-in-law a si of uh, Diane Sawyer. Now, if you want to research who Diane Sawyer is, I'll do it for you. All right? She is basically, she was basically, she's a broadcast journalist known for me known for anchoring major programs on two different networks, both for CBS in the for CBS News and ABC News. All right. She's been pretty much been doing this pretty much since pretty much since the uh, since the 60s. All right. And more importantly, you also have to consider the fact she was a member of the uh, president of uh, President Richard Nixon's White House staff and assisted on his post president post post president's presidency memoirs. So, yeah. She has that kind of backing. And also her father, you know, who basically tragically died back in 2014, okay? Her father was a Hollywood producer and basically won an Oscar award. So, yeah, she has the backing and she has that kind of level of support that's pretty much pushed her into those top positions as ESPN in comparison to what the all the other journalists are out there, you know, doing, you know, the beat writing, reporting all the time. You notice how a lot of the uh, reporting on ESPN gets done by just mostly by beat writers that are actually in the trenches doing the actual journalism work. All right. Don't think for a second that Mike, that, uh, you know, uh, uh, I forgot his name, whatever. But it, it, the point is this, you know, the thing is that, you know, 
these these networks and these executives, they always like to play the go along, get along type game. And when one person does not get along with that kind of stuff, then they slowly kick him out the door. Just look what happened to Jamil Hill and how she basically put her foot in her mouth and basically get, basically got herself fired for it. Right. Look at Michelle Beadle and how and how the whole situation with her really got herself fired. Because when John Skipper was the president of ESPN, she, he made sure that Michelle Beale was doing those top jobs. You know what I'm saying? Working for the you know for that nation that show with Max Kellman and uh, Marcellus Wiley, and then also working with you know on the NBA side of things, hosting the files and all that other stuff. But the thing is, is that when John Skipper was was basically removed from his position as president of ESPN because of his drug you know problems, when a new president came in, you notice how. You know, those positions that, she, that Michelle Beadle had were slowly dissipating right in front of her because they basically wanted her out because she got because she became much more of a headache to deal with. And they basically they booted her out at ESPN. So I know I go. I know I've been kind of a little ranty about this a little bit, but basically what I'm trying to say is, is that Rachel Nichols is basically a self is basically a spoiled, entitled person. Because, yes, she may have had her top experience doing all the other jobs working in journalism, but she has major backing that's got her to her at ESPN. Now, you've seen the amount of people that have been defending Rachel Nichols. People like, you know, Kendrick Perkins and Richard Jefferson. They both are basically allied with Clutch Sports. So, yeah, they're going to defend her because it basically revolves around LeBron James. But for Steven Jackson to make that defense of Rachel Nichols makes himself look real, real bad. And I'm going to tell you all something. I've seen the people down in Texas and what they've been saying on social media. They are not happy with what Demon with Stephen Jackson had to say because you talk about you know having this you know you know preaching for black rights and preaching for George Floyd, but at the same time you turn around and then you basically defend you know Rachel Nichols, bro. That's why I I've pretty much lost all respect for Stephen Jackson at this point. You understand what I'm saying? He really made himself look like a huge hypocrite himself. So yeah, this whole situation is pretty much making. ESPN hypocrites, it's made Maria Taylor hypocrite, and it's made Rachel Nichols a hypocrite because Maria Taylor wants to have the big time money like Stephen A. Smith, but to, but in my personal you know observation, she has not put in the type of work in to pretty much warrant that type of argument. I wouldn't be surprised if they gave her a lesser, gave her a contract with less money on it to pretty much put her out the door. Now, do I think that Rachel, like I said, Rachel Nichols is never going to get fired because Diane Sawyer works for ABC News. All right. ABC, ESPN, who, what do they have a relationship with? They all are owned by Disney. And you really think that ESPN wants to deal with a lawsuit on their hands over the whole situation with Rachel Nichols? And more importantly, that fake apology that Rachel Nichols did was so fake beyond belief. And Maria Taylor never even responded to that apology. You know what I'm saying? So the thing is, though, bro, like, listen, this whole situation is making making everybody look bad. It makes the network look bad because it just basically shows that they're only only there for the get along thing to try to make rating for themselves. And they're not really, you know, supportive of the whole, you know, movements in our society. It makes Rachel Nichols look bad because she's come across this white privileged type of woman that wants to have all the opportunities for herself, but basically wants to undercut everybody along the way. And it makes and it makes Maria Taylor look bad because she wants to have the same type of amount of money as all the other people working at ESPN when she hasn't even had the same amount of years to warrant that type of case. So, yeah, everybody is looking real, real bad in this whole situation. And more importantly, it's just, it makes the network even look worse. So that's just my two cents of the whole situation. I know that there's going to be some people that are going to disagree with this. But feel free to comment in the comment section below. Do you agree with some of the things I've said? Do you have a different take about this whole situation? Just let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm very interested to see what you had to say. But as I said before. You know, you could disagree, you could take either side if you want to, but you have to understand there's always a different perspective on every single side of the fence. So, yeah, I, I, it's a very, it was a very type of video that I had to make sure that I had to do some re background research on before I actually did this. So, I hope you guys can understand and digest, you know, all the things that I'm saying. So, I'm going to leave it to y'all on the court. Do y'all do y'all agree what y'all agree with the assessment of the video of the whole situation, or do you have a different take about the whole thing? I'm very, I'm very interested to see. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. And I'm gonna do a uh, post game live stream on the game one of the NBA Finals later on tonight. And with that, I'm out. Peace.